वेलकम टू वीटीयू ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम मैसेल्फ डॉक्टर वीरेश तोटप्पा मगल वर्किंग ऐस प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री तोंटदार कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वैरायटी ऑफ नैनो मटेरियल सिंथेसिस लाइक अ सोलजल मेथड सॉल्यूशन precipitation method gas condensation method chemical vapor condensation method now we are remaining with hydrothermal synthesis and uh, thermolysis uh, process of synthesizing nano materials i would like to recall your memory in the sol gel process a precursor usually metal alkoxide was taken and uh, it was dissolved in uh, alcohol and water on hydrolysis there will be the formation uh, on uh, say uh, on the formation of the sol slowly it used to convert into gel thereafter the the agitation is uh, aging is done and after aging process we you know dried it and densified it and obtained in the form of nano material and in the solution precipitation uh, method a metal salt was chosen for uh, uh, you know for which you, you know uh, the salt usually taken is you know of the material for what uh, you know uh, of what you are going to expect to form the nano materials for example iron nano material you need to take you know uh, salt of iron silver uh, salt you have to choose for the preparation of silver nano particles likewise salt is you know first hydrated in the you know suitable uh, solvent usually water and uh, thereafter in order to obtain precipitation sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide is used and uh, the precipitate once it is going to be formed it is filtered dried and calcined to obtain solution uh, to obtain nano materials by the solution precipitation method and in the gas condensation method the carrier is usually the gas directly the metal for which the nano particles are expected to form was heated in such a way that on heating there should be the formation of vapors from the surface of that metal in a particular chamber that chamber has to be filled with an inert gas and uh, as so inert gas avoid the ag ag aggregation of these uh, say nano particles in the vapory form and then when they used to you know get uh, cooling okay so when they just undergo cooling process they are collected in the form of the nano particles this was you know gas condensation method and chemical vapor condensation process we have understood that this is a collective name for all the processes okay in which uh, the uh, you know the desired uh, say layer or a film is going to be applied by making the vapor formation okay so this chemical vapor condensation method also we have studied where precursors are you know heated in a chamber and thereafter the vapors formed are carried by inert gas like xenon argon etc they are you know taken into a chamber where the reaction is carried out and thereafter there will be the formation of nano particles those nano particles are you know cooled and thereafter collected in the form of the solid particles solid nano particles so likewise we have studied sol gel process 
solution precipitation process, gas condensation process, chemical vapor condensation process. And now we are remained with the hydrothermal process as well as thermolysis process for the preparation of nanomaterials. Yes, welcome. Let us, you know, go for understanding of these two methods. Hydrothermal synthesis. As uh, the name itself is hydrothermal, water is heated. Okay. So, water is heated means not alone water is heated. Okay. The synthesis is, you know, it is very much convenient for the large scale production of uh, nano size materials, particularly for industrial purpose, this method is very much convenient. The principle of this experiment is, okay, so the solution is, uh, you know, uh, has to be, uh, the precursor has to be dissolved in the aqueous solution, aqueous, uh, say, uh, aqueous media means water only. And, uh, this, okay, so this uh, uh, particular solution, okay, uh, it is to be heated around uh, 300 degrees centigrade in an autoclave, okay. So that what happens, the pressure, pressure also matters here, the pressure, you know, temperature is around 300 degrees centigrade and pressure should be kept around 100 bar. So, in this pressure and temperature, why around uh, 300 degree centigrade temperature we are going to maintain means uh, the maximum ionic product of water is you know made available in the range of 250 to 300 degree centigrade. Therefore, therefore, you know well below 300 degree centigrade, you know the mixture is heated and uh, at the pressure say 100 bar, then you know so there will be, there will be, you know, uh, the precursor is going to be, you know, uh, interacting with water and uh, it will be getting uh, hydrated and uh, after the hydration, after the hydration, okay, so uh, there will be the formation of, uh, there will be the formation of nanoparticles and uh, let us, you know, how we are going to choose uh, the salt and how we are going to arrive at the nano products, uh, you know, actually we, we shall study. A super saturated solution of ferric nitrate. Super saturated means what? First you need to take the ferric nitrate and it is uh, dissolved in the minimum quantity of water. Slowly it is, uh, you know, the excessive quantity has to be added. At one particular point uh, you will arrive in such a way that uh, the added ferric nitrate will be settling at the bottom and thereafter it has to be heated. So, even you know as the heating is uh, continued, the settled uh, say ferric nitrate goes on dissolving there. Further addition of uh, ferric nitrate leads to the you know deposition of uh, the same solid at the bottom even at the high temperature. So, that solution is called as a super saturated solution. And uh, it is to be taken in uh, water and uh, say it should be kept in autoclave and uh, heated around 394 degrees centigrade uh, in the range of pressure 25 to 50 mega Pascal okay, for about 5 days. So, this results in the formation of a solid uh, iron oxide. Okay. So, what the reactions are going uh, during this time is, you know, this uh, iron nitrate, uh, 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 this uh, ferric nitrate, okay, so it will be, had, uh, you know, interacting with water molecule, there will be the formation of uh, metal hydroxide and this metal hydroxide undergo, you know, uh, the decomposition to form metal hydroxide. And this water at high temperature that will, that will be leaving the entire metal hydroxide. Okay. Therefore, we will be arriving directly at iron oxide here. And uh, <coughs> this is, uh, you know, this particular compound is heated around 500 degree centigrade. And thus, you know, all the possible uh, water molecule or moisture trapped inside is going to be removed. And uh, 
it is having thus whatever the iron oxide is going to be formed it is uh, the nanomaterial with the range of size 16 to 36 nanometer. <coughs> so, uh, this is uh, the system ok. So, this is super saturated uh, say precursor present in the water and uh, you know it is uh, heated around 354 degree centigrade temperature and uh, you know in the said pressure say 25 to around uh, 35 uh, giga Pascal pressure is maintained here in a you know uh, closer uh, uh, container. So, that leads to the hydration and uh, after the hydration there will be the you know decomposition to form metal oxide. So, this is what uh, the system ok we use usually for the hydrothermal synthesis ok. So, uh, in detail if you would like to understand first hydrated metal ions are going to be hydrolyzed to metal hydroxide. I said you know once again you know you please uh, recall metal hydroxides they do proceed to form the precipitate as metal oxides through dehydration and uh, in this way ok you can obtain nano oxides like uh, silicas, silicates, aluminosilicates, zeolites, tungstates, neobates, titanates etc. You can choose and uh, accordingly you can obtain the respective nano particles ok using an cleave. So, this is a very very simple and sober method of you know uh, preparation of the nanomaterials particularly for the bulk purpose. And uh, now le let us you know try to understand the benefits what are the benefits of uh, this hydrothermal uh, technology of uh, synthesis of nanomaterials. First of all is you know in this particular uh, process you will not be using any chemical which is toxic in its nature. Okay, this is environmentally very very friendly process and uh, <coughs> this uh, rate of the reaction can be controlled very easily and stoichiometry can be maintained very appropriately ok. And uh, the purity of uh, the prepared powder ok, so can be excellently maintained. And uh, <coughs> here ok, we can have the control over the size and distribution and shape of nanomaterials ok. So, by making the variation in the pressure and temperature as well as the concentration of the say salt used in the say uh, preparation and uh, easy to scale up for the industrial demands ok. You can cater the need of the industries ok if you are involving in providing the say nanomaterials to particular industry. And uh, it is uh, as I said it is an environmental friendly technology as it does not use any you know toxic uh, chemicals during the synthesis process. And uh, it uh, rarely requires any pre sintering uh, uh, or else uh, calcination uh, step ok. So, almost uh, uh, we can say no ok. Thus ok it is uh, uh, not uh, you know energy intensive process and it is eco friendly process ok. So, these are all the features of uh, say hydrothermal process of synthesis of nanomaterials. Now, let us uh, go for the understanding of thermolysis of uh, say thermolysis procedure to produce nanomaterials. Thermolysis is a very very simple process which uh, involves say heating of a metal compound with a high boiling solvents in the presence of capping agents. So, this is the gist, gist of uh, say whatever I have underlined here this is the gist of this process. You needed to take uh, the metal compound, you needed to choose the solvent 
you need to choose the suitable capping agent. With this, okay, you will be able to transform the desired uh, say material into bulk material into nano material. Okay. So, here the role of uh, say solvent is you know it will uh, say as it is a, a high boiling solvent it will provide high temperature it can accommodate more quantity of heat within a small quantity of the solvent and then capping agent avoid the mixing of the or aggregation of the nanoparticles they uh, you know they just cap the nanoparticles so that uh, they will be retaining uh, the particle size without any aggregation and uh, say metal compound you know it is the one it is a source okay so for of which uh, bulk material you are going to uh, you are interested to prepare the nano compound that particular metal compound has to be chosen here okay so here <coughs> after making careful choice of uh, metal compound capping molecule and solvent in uh, say reducing uh, conditions they will be yielding a nanoparticles of the desired metals okay so let us understand uh, with an example here tetrachloro platinum uh, 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 potassium platinate is there it is reduced by hydrogen in the presence of sodium polyacrylate in an you know argon atmosphere okay argon is an inert uh, gas you know in an argon atmosphere at room temperature to give a colloidal platinum. Here you just uh, see there is a uh, you know reduction by hydrogen okay, for this uh, uh, tetrachloro potassium platinate and uh, you know this sodium polyacrylate is chosen. Okay. This is a capping agent the size controlling parameters here are the pH and the ratio of initial metal salt concentration and uh, capping material. Okay. So, the carboxylates, carbonyls, acetates, oleate, theolate complexes. Okay. So, uh, low valent olefinic compounds of metals like uh, platinum, palladium, auric, mine gold, copper, zinc dispersed uh, you know in the toluene as the solvent and uh, these compounds when heated okay in the reducing condition okay will give you the nanoparticles okay. So, here capping you know capping uh, uh, means what and uh, redispersion uh, and capping means what in this process uh, means uh, stabilizing agents like you know TOPO, trioctyl phosphine uh, here uh, it is actually phosphine okay trioctyl phosphine oxide okay this will be preventing the aggregation of the particles and uh, the precipitation of the nanoparticles during the growth and they, they do attach to the nanoparticle surface as a monolayer means they do means a PO PO attach over the surface of the nanoparticle as a monolayer and once the monolayer formed it will not be interacting with any other nanoparticle thus there will be avoiding of the aggregation. So, thus they are going to cap each of the nanoparticles and hence they do avoid the aggregation of the nanoparticles and if they aggregate once again there will be the formation of the bulkier uh, materials. Okay. So, this is what uh, the beauty of uh, this particular method. Okay. This is said to be capping of the nanoparticle. When a change of solvent is required, the solvent is evaporated slowly under the vacuum and then redispersed in the new solvent. You needed to search for the new solvent usually hexane if uh, earlier you have used the toluene you can choose the hexane okay you can dissolve in the hexane then nanoparticle solution can be stored in the hexane at room temperature for a longer time okay so thus uh, 
this method is once again seems to be very very simple for the preparation of nano materials after having understanding the variety of methods of synthesis of nano materials we will be going further for understanding of some of the nano scale materials okay only we are restricting our uh, say study for understanding their structure how structurally they are and uh, we will be understanding what are their properties and what are their applications that's all we restrict you know we will not be going in detail for you know the understanding of uh, the preparation of uh, those nano scale materials etc simply we will be understanding what is the basic structural aspects of those nano materials and then what are the general properties usually associated with that particular nano scale material and then wherever it has got applicability those applications we are going to understand okay so let us go for the study of carbon nanotube okay which is generally you know mentioned as cnt and you might have already heard okay single walled uh, carbon nanotube and multi walled carbon nanotubes okay so likewise and uh, the others are fullerenes okay and uh, graphene nano composite materials for all this what we are going to do is we will be studying their basic structure and uh, general properties associated with and later wherever they have got the applicability this much only we are going to study so now first okay carbon nanotubes what is carbon nanotube it is one of the most important uh, class of nano material and uh, it was prepared by japanese physicist sumio lizimia invented uh, say in 1991 okay very first time until 1991 okay people used to thought that uh, think that you know carbon has got allotrope but uh, they were never thinking that carbon and nanotubes may also be one of the allotrope but after 1991 okay so among the list of the carbon uh, allotropes this is also included and uh, <clears throat> here these nanotubes are having the dimension okay one dimension i mean okay so only uh, two okay dimension uh, only two, uh, one of the uh, say parameter like uh, height width uh, two of the parameters height and width they are within the 100 nanometer and one of that is out of the you know uh, range of the nanometer okay so therefore you may just uh, imagine tube means uh, say uh, this is the tube okay so here this is the length okay width and breadth width and breadth are well within 100 nanometer only length is more than 100 nanometer therefore this is one dimensional cylindrical nano particle okay so carbon nanotubes are you know usually they are systematically arranged in the graphene okay graphene is a two dimensional sheet and if you roll actually into the cylindrical form just like a paper you imagine paper and make a roll of paper okay so paper is nothing but the graphene and you, when you roll it okay so that is uh, uh, if you only one uh, say layer uh, of paper is there that is single walled uh, carbon nanotube and uh, if you know multiple uh, say roll you have of the paper okay then it is called as a multiple like, paper here indicates you know you just think that this is a graphene okay graphene in the form of the sheet okay so if it possesses multi number of uh, walls within then it is called as multi walled carbon nanotube okay so <clears throat> here you can visualize okay so this is uh, the carbon nanotube 
the hexagonal shape is there each carbon is uh, you know having the attachment with the three other carbons okay so uh, this uh, say uh, has pentagonal structure also as well as hexagonal structure also within it okay so um, if you just ro have the role like this only one role that is single walled carbon nanotube and uh, if it has you know multiple number of uh, roles well within then it is called as multi walled carbon nanotubes okay so then <coughs> usually these uh, say carbon nanotubes are uh, produced by variety of methods among them very popularly adopted are arc, arc discharge method laser ablation method and chemical vapor deposition method is usually adopted and uh, the properties are very fascinating to un you know to understand and it is uh, having you know uh, high tensile strength uh, on par with the steel or more than uh, you know compared to steel you know it is it has got more tensile strength and uh, it has got a very good electrical conductivity similar to that of the copper and uh, for this reason okay, and some more uh, say properties are also there okay so they are very stiff okay stiff as that of the diamond very hardest okay so the weight of this uh, nanotube is very 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 less this is a lightweight one okay so the density of the carbon nanotubes is one fourth of the steel if you put carbon nanotubes in the water they will be floating on the surface okay it uh, say you need to make much uh, effort okay in holding uh, the water in holding these carbon nanotubes in the bell, uh, in the middle of the water okay so carbon nanotubes are very stronger than the steel they exhibit extraordinary mechanical properties and carbon uh, carbon carbon nanotubes uh, are said to possess 10 times uh, you know more strength than the steel <coughs> this is all due to the arrangement of atoms in a particular matrix and carbon nanotubes have okay high thermal uh, capacity they can sustain high temperature okay and uh, therefore their expansion coefficient is very very less expansion coefficient is very very less therefore they do not expand on heating and they not they do not contract on say cooling okay they will remain you know they will retain their uh, structure or they will retain their dimension even if the thermal variation occurs therefore it is one of the important properties in making a very very you know uh, uh, structures uh, which are uh, in need of uh, you know greater uh, say structural dimensions mm, like you know it should not uh, elongate or it should not uh, contract such type of uh, uh, you know property wherever it is required this is a very important material in carbon nanotubes each carbon atom is surrounded by three other atom and through the covalent bond so they are all sp2 hybridized the crystalline structure of carbon nanotubes exhibit or exists in the form of uh, regular hexagons but uh, you know uh, uh, many of them are hexagons one or two pentagons are existing here okay so carbon nanotubes are elastic in nature and they do possess uh, excellent elasticity carbon nanotubes are good conductors of heat also <coughs> they do conduct they do allow the heat to pass through them from one part to another part and uh, they have got uh, excellent electrical conductivity also okay so carbon nanotubes one of the important property of this is they are chemically very very stable okay so therefore they do possess excellent corrosion resistance okay so having understood uh, a variety of properties of these carbon nanotubes would like to understand where this can be utilized or applied mainly in the you know electronic industries okay so these are used 
and uh, in making fabrics also okay because of its uh, very excellent strength okay and uh, fiber forming property carbon nanotube is used okay for making uh, fibers and fabrics and uh, carbon nanotubes ba based on uh, ceramics are also available okay so it has got a uh, carbon nanotube has got excellent uh, biomedical applications because you have understood that it has got greater you know chemical resistance property it won't be you know interacting with uh, say body part that will be very safe inside the body therefore it has got a variety of biomedical applications okay so i think uh, you have got very interest much of the interest in knowing variety of properties and variety of applications that are you know already associated with carbon nanotubes so having much more curiosity in our heart let us try to understand okay what are fullerenes and uh, what are the properties of fullerenes and uh, where they can be used okay fullerenes you know as soon as you listen to fullerene okay you need to remember uh, the soccer ball okay its structure is like that so this is the structure of the fullerene if you see closely it has got a say hexagonal structure 1 2 3 4 5 6 adjacent to this uh, there is a pentagon 1 2 3 4 5 okay likewise like it is a very interesting uh, structure you know the they are you know <coughs> each carbon atom is once again surrounded by three other carbon atom and the length of this bond varies from 1. Uh, say 4 to 1.45 angstrom okay so depending upon the length okay their properties to little bit extent you know they are going to be varied and uh, you know this uh, these are you know clusters or zero dimensional solids zero dimensional solids means uh, they don't have any you know length breadth or uh height okay so these are made up of uh, mainly carbon and uh, they do you know are the, uh, the particles are arranged together in such a way that you know there uh, there will be around uh, 60 uh, to 70 carbon uh, atoms are going to be aggregated together to form a bucky ball or a soccer ball which you are going to name it as fullerene okay so fullerenes are made by heating the graphite in an electric arc in the presence of inert gas otherwise in the presence of inert gas if you take the oxygen okay so what happens there will be the, there could be the formation of a carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide therefore in order to avoid such type of uh, the products to form okay in order to say gas environment is maintained when this is you know allowed to degrade its size from bulkier to nano size and uh, <coughs> the sooty material formed by the condensation of uh, carbon vapor consists okay so this uh, carbon vapor consists around car 60 carbon atoms to 70 carbon atoms and they, these are you know cage like molecules and uh, as i explained earlier this possess soccer ball structure and uh, the fullerenes are sol uh, soluble not soluble in water but they are very easily soluble in solvents non polar solvents like benzene toluin chloroform tetrahydrofuran etc okay so here <coughs> it has got a excellent symmetry very high percent of high you know uh, symmetry is going to be observed in this particular uh, fullerene molecule so if the crystal crystal crystalline materials are you know highly symmetric and therefore they are excellent conductors of electricity as well as heat okay due to probably its highest symmetry it also possesses uh, you know 
uh, the conductivity on par with the metal as well as strength on par with the metal etc. And uh, some of its uh, say chemical as well as phys physical chemical aspects properties are also very fascinating to understand. So, here fullerenes show variation in their behavior okay, so and structure on changing with the temperature. At high temperature fullerene instead of converting into C60 that will be converting into C7400. Okay. So, fullerene shows the change in the structure under different pressures. If you vary the pressure, okay, there will be slight modification in its structure. Okay. The ionization enthalpy of a fullerene okay, is 7.61 electron volt. The electron affinity of fullerene is 2.62 2.8 electron volt and uh, therefore okay fullerene uh, resembles an electrophile uh, uh, in the chemical reactions and fullerene can act as an electron acceptor and it can easily accept three electrons or more than three electrons therefore it can behave as an oxidizing agent okay so uh, oxidizing agent what it does it make other you know to lose the electron and itself gain the electron therefore here fullerene when it can accept three or more electron okay it will be acting as an excellent oxidizing agent when you are going to dope with alkali or alkaline earth metals like uh, lithium okay or uh, you know uh, hydrogen or some other you know uh, metal if you, when you are going to choose for doping they will be exhibiting the superconductivity properties ok. So, ferromagnetism is one of the interesting property associated with the fullerene and it is very easily soluble in organic solvent we have studied already this one and uh, it has got an extensive applications in optics okay uh, particularly in making uh, optical uh, filters okay it is used and in electronics they are used as molecular switches diodes and transistors okay so there are huge number of applications among them few i could able to mention here as an important applications Okay, if your curiosity guides you, try to explore much more applications associated uh, with this. <coughs> now, in military, okay, fullerenes are used as optical and microwave absorption coating. If you coat with the fullerene over the surface of the aeroplane or aircraft, okay, so, no radar can detect the aeroplane or aircraft, okay. So, and uh, thus, okay, so you can uh, use it for the military purpose, for spying, okay. Fullerenes are chemically reactive, okay, and can be added to the polymers and the elastomers to create new copolymers okay so those new copolymer, copolymers they are uh, you know having specific physical and mechanical properties when always you know you know this thing polymer when they are separate okay so they do possess uh, different individual properties but when they form copolymer okay so the individual property of those is going to be disappearing to form a very very you know different property ok. So, after having understanding the nanomaterials like uh, carbon nanotubes and fullerenes we are now understanding graphene. Graphene is a two dimensional crystalline allotrope of carbon it consists of a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice. It has high electrical conductivity 
and uh, it acts as semi metal with a small overlap between valence band and the conduction band okay so this uh, graphene okay so it's uh, in its uh, you know carbon atoms are densely packed in such a way that they have got you know a regular hexagonal pattern in it we shall observe here okay so e this is a sheet two dimensional sheet of graphene and uh, if you observe this sheet is uh, you know a flat sheet is made up of uh, say hexagonal structure of uh, arrangement of carbon in it and uh, here also in this each carbon atom is attached to the three carbon atoms next available and uh, bond length is approximately 1.44 angstrom and once again these are sp2 hybridized okay so the same information is given in this slide okay they are densely packed and uh, you know the pattern remained a hexagonal one and uh, the atoms are about you know distant 1.42 angstrom and uh, each you know carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atom and uh, bonding is sp2 hybridized <coughs> this uh, say structural aspects has got uh, properties uh, like this graphene has got an excellent electronic conductivity because of its conduction and valence bond uh, you know they are going to meet at direct point direct point you know you have well understood this in physics and almost there will be a zero gap between zero gap in the semiconductor okay it has a, a unique optical property and for you know it produces unexpectedly high opacity for an atomic monolayer in the vacuum okay so thermal transportation in graphene is an active area of a research it is still you know going on it has attracted attention because of the potential for thermal management applications okay so uh, it is uh, you know in future days uh, graphene made uh, graphene based uh, say wires may be expected so that they will never they will uh, you know uh, they will not consume you know the electrical energy or thermal energy in transporting from one part to the another part graphene melts almost nearly you know at 4125 kelvin it has got high temperature sustainability and uh, even if you know when you heat to that extent graphene okay melts into an agglomeration of loosely coupled double bonded chains before converting into gaseous phase therefore graphene is the strongest material and uh, it is ever tested uh, you know among ever tested uh, ever tested materials this possesses very you know highest strength around 130.5 gigapascal okay tensile strength it possesses and uh, <coughs> uh by having uh, you know uh, all these uh, say properties with that okay so wherever they are going to be applied okay they themselves uh, are called as applications graphene is a flexible conductor that holds uh, okay uh, promise for the future device particularly you know th th this is thought to be you know uh, uh, replacing the battery materials right now whatever having in it okay battery materials many of them are toxic in the in, in their nature like a cadmium lead etc okay so graphene is a flexible conductor and therefore it holds promise for various uh, devices uh, and their applicability including light emitting diodes and uh, touching panels and smart windows or phones and uh, <coughs> like uh, in electronic uh, industry also it has got wide applicability in making uh, field effect uh, transistors uh, okay graphene is uh, 
made use and uh, in the graphene uh, say in the super capacitors, capacitors you know okay, the capacitors, ordinary capacitors uh, are having microfarad uh, you know capacity in the market right now and uh, nearly one uh, near to farad and uh, more than farad okay. So, uh, if the charge is can be hold inside the material that is called as the super capacitor and uh, if uh, the charges are going to be stored in that okay they can be tapped whenever uh, the requirement is there and by you know regulating uh, the flow of them charges we can able to you know generate appropriate quantity of current or voltage difference for a particular applications and uh, functional uh, functionalized graphene uh, has got exceptional uh, promise in the biological as well as in the chemical field as a sensor okay so these are all the variety of applications associated with graphene and now okay we shall try to understand another material that is nano composites nano composites are class of materials in which uh, okay zero dimensional one dimensional and two dimensional particle nano particles are embedded either in a metal or ceramic or in a polymer matrix okay to produce uh, say nano composites so here these are the nano particles and these can be embedded to produce uh, say uh, nano composite uh, materials okay so uh, these are you know this is a two dimensional one this is a particle a particle nature okay so these can be embedded within the matrix and uh, one can obtain nano composite material <coughs> say in detail would like to understand here and uh, the matrix material okay so nano composites uh, uh, can be classified as uh, ceramic nano composites and uh, metal nano composites and polymer nano composites okay so the reinforcing material can be you know nano particles or nano sheets or nano fibers okay so matrix here mainly is you know it may be metal or it may be you know polymer or it may be ceramic but the you know uh, reinforcing material like you know in previously polymer composites we have studied in there you know matrix and fiber fiber is reinforced between matrix likewise uh, reinforcing material here is a uh, nano sheet or nano particle or nano fibers and uh, matrix might be metal ceramic or say polymer accordingly okay they are called as uh, say ceramic nano matrix nano composites metal matrix nano composites as well as polymer matrix nano composites okay so here one example i would like to take okay so <coughs> thermoplastic polyurethane and uh, here um, reduced graphene oxide uh, uh, sheet okay so as well as the nano particles okay ferrite nano particles they are going to be mixed together and heated and hot pressed to obtain the nano composite sheet okay so this is one such example to produce nano composite material okay so here the nano composites differ from conventional composite material due to exceptional high surface to volume ratio these are the things that are going to make change compared to normal uh, composites and nano composites okay so the fillers uh, are uh, the okay so uh, reinforcing uh, material whatever you are going to use they are of nano nano sized and they are having uh, high surface area to volume ratio in the reinforcing phase this is going to produce make a, a huge you know contribution 
uh, in terms of mechanical strength or in terms of uh, thermal properties. Okay. So, uh, whenever these are going to be incorporated in the polymer matrix or metal matrix or ceramic matrix to obtain the nano composites. Okay. So, uh, here <coughs> these are the variety of uh, uses you are going to you know observe and uh, in producing batteries with greater power output. Okay. So, uh, these uh, uh, nano composites are having greater utility. In producing structural components with a high strength to weight ratio, strength to weight ratio you know it decides uh, uh, the uh, applicability because uh, lighter material should possess. Okay. So, it should possess a less weight and a high strength. Therefore, hence strength increases with the decrease in the weight, okay, it has got more applicability in the industry. In you know uh, in making uh, you know uh, light, uh, sensors with the nano composites, uh, uh, nano composites are extensively used and in making flexible batteries and in making you know uh, vehicular part because when the less weight is uh, achieved for making the vehicles fuel consumption will be less and therefore fuel economy increases and in making uh, artificial joints and in uh, okay so preparing uh, abrasion and uh, wear and tear resistant uh, surfaces okay these have got excellent applicabilities <coughs> by having understood uh, okay so the different uh, nano materials their structural aspects their properties and their applications okay so this particular module 3 engineering materials is going to be concluded i thank once again wholeheartedly VTU e Shikshana program as well as e learning center Mysuru for their uh, say uh, uh, you know uh, cooperation in making uh, this particular uh, task successful. I also thank uh, Mr. Sitaramu and uh, Shokumar of uh, this e learning center Mysuru for excellent cooperation in uh, getting these videos. Thank you, thank you one and all.